Please let me have a lot of lapis. Please let me have a lot of lapis. Please let me have a lot of lapis. <sighs> okay. Wilk's Trustmaster reward is a close of high HP, good attack, and nice defense. When equipped to Wilk, it will also give him an extra 500 attack, so everyone else still gets its elemental resistance and physical evasion. His Super Trustmaster reward is a two-handed axe of high attack. When equipped onto Wilk, it gives him another 500 attack and a 150% boost to his HP, though everyone else still gets its limit burst damage boost and passive earth resistance. The axe can also be changed into a two-handed fist via recipe. Though you can't see it here, it's literally the same thing but the earth resistance is changed to wind. Onto his active abilities. Wilk's attack scale of morale, fill his limit burst gauge by one third if you choose, and fill the morale gauge if applicable. In fact, all of his abilities fill his limit burst gauge by one third when you use them. Frenzy Claws chains of Boating Shrike. Steady Claws chain with Absolute Mirror of Equity, removes any attack and defense breaks on Wilk, and grants him resistance to said breaks. Dragon Dash chains a Stardust Ray and lets Wilk evade four attacks. Ancestor's Presence reduces your enemy's axe resistance by 25%, boosts Wilk's attack by 300%, and grants him four strong killer buffs against demons, dragons, humans, and insects. Focused Earth Stance imbues Earth onto Wilk, boosts Earth damage by 60%, and reduces the enemy's Earth resistance by 130%. Focused Wind Stance is the same thing but wind. Memories of the Ancestral Dragon can be used once per battle. It boosts your team's attack by 350%, grants them a powerful double killer against demons and dragons, and trampolines the damage modifiers of Wilk's limit burst. Passives. With his Trust Master Reward or Super Trust Master Reward equipped, Wilk gets a big boost to his attack, equipment attack when carrying a single weapon, half the capture chain limit boost, a big boost to his limit burst damage, and changes his normal attack to Emerald Onslaught, which deals damage that partially ignores the enemy's defense, chain supporting Shrike, and restores some of his HP and MP. The next four locked abilities require his Super Trust Master Reward, and are dependent on which of the two forms is currently equipped. Equip the axe, and you'll unlock the rock style passives. The first, Steady Crag, is an ability that gives Wilk a 60% physical and magic mitigation buff against human and dragon enemies, boosts his earth resistance by 100%, gives him a 75% general mitigation buff, and fills his land burst gauge by one third. The second, Stand Firm, is a passive, which boosts his lightning and earth resistance respectively by 25% and 50%, lets him deal more damage to humans and dragons, and grants him a guts buff. Equip the fist, and you'll unlock the Cloud style passives. The first, Peaceful Zephyr, is an active ability which is a counterpart to Steady Crack. It switches the killers to Demon and Insect, Earth with Wind, grants him an HP barrier, and the limit burst gauge remains the same. The second, Bend in the Wind, is a passive which is a counterpart to Stand Firm. It switches the elemental resistance of Ice and Wind, respectively, the killers of Demons and Insects, and boosts its evasion by a large amount. Even without these locked abilities, Woke already has an incredible killer spread, hunting each type of enemy with emphasis on the ones I already mentioned. He also gets a boost to his limit burst gauge fill rate, but doesn't have any passives to boost his limit burst damage otherwise. He also has a boost to his chain damage, which is nice. At EX plus 2, he gets Dragon Warrior Shrank, which is Warring Spear, but also fills the rest of your team's limit burst gauges by 1 6 of that amount. He also gets Dragon Warrior's Training, which gives him a flat 5000 HP and 500 attack. Let's look at his limit burst. It boosts his limit burst damage by 300%. Gives him a powerful killer against demons and dragons, a whopping 85% general mitigation buff, and deals non-elemental damage that partially ignores the enemy's defense. Time to change forms. Wilk has a true brave shift, which has no limitations whatsoever. Onto his active abilities. Wilk's abilities scale off morale and chain off a triple casted boat and shrike. Dragon's reincarnation requires his full limit burst gauge. In return, it dispels the enemy's buffs, inflicts a 88% attack and magic break and a 85% defense and spear break, gives Woke a HP regen, and recharges vengeance against the Draco Knot by one. The aforementioned ability requires two charges to be used and starts off with zero. It inflicts a 90% defense break, gives Woke an extra 300% attack buff via Berserk, and a 400% attack buff to back that up. His locked abilities from his Super Trustmaster reward have also changed. Equipping the axe gives access to Quake Blade, which requires his full limit burst gauge and can only be used twice per battle. It inflicts a 35% axe imperil, boosts Wilk's accuracy, grants him a powerful human and dragon killer buff, and recharges vengeance against the Draco Knot by two. Equipping the fist gives access to Hurricane Fist, which has the same limitations, switches to axe imperil with a fist imperil, the killers to demon and insect, gives Wilk a whopping 90% physical mitigation buff, and the recharge is the same. Passives, they are the same. Let's look at his limit burst. It lowers the enemy's accuracy by 50%, boosts Wilk's limit burst damage by 300%, and 
These damage stack get stronger when used against a dragon, and the final blow gets stronger with additional use. Let's rank Brave abilities. They're all very good at making him kill. I prioritize Warrior of the Emerald Crystal to boost the passives. Believe it or not, what was shown here was only at level 1. Vengeance against the Draco Knot for more attack and more damage, and Ancestor's Presence to strengthen the Killer Boss. Time to make a damage rotation. I'll assume he's not in Clash of Wills, and I'll be going with Earth. On turn 1, cast Ancestor's Presence, Focused Earth Stance, and Frenzy Claws. On turn 2, switch forms, and use his Lena Burst. On turn 3, switch back, and triple cast Frenzy Claws. On turn 4, switch forms, and use his Lena Burst. On turn 5, triple cast Frenzy Claws. On turn 6, cast Ancestor's Presence, Focused Earth Stance, and Memories of the Ancestral Dragon. Repeat the rotation from turn 2. Now, what if you are in Clash of Wales? Well, for that, the first turn will be the same. But on the second, you want to switch forms, and cast Dragon's Reincarnation. On turn 3, switch back, and triple cast Frenzy Claws. On turn 4, activate his Brave Shift, and cast Dragon's Reincarnation. On turn 5, cast Vengeance against the Draco Knot. Repeat the rotation from here. So, EX2? Yeah, you won't like to hear this, but it really helps. EX plus 2 not only gives you flat stats, but it also gives you access to the Super Trust Master reward, which gives flat stats and access to more abilities, and you also get Warring Spirit and 1 6 of that for everyone else. Not to mention whatever passive that goes with the weapon you equip. EX plus 2 is especially helpful in Clash of Wills, as it lets you use either Quake Blade or Hurricane Fist to quickly charge Vengeance against the Draco Knot for big, fast damage. At EX plus 3, you get his Vision card. Unfortunately, that's pretty good too. The card itself has high attack, and then the passives make it better. The first boosts HP, attack, and little burst damage, the second gives a morale regen for Clash of Wales, and the third gives a flat 500 attack for any unit from Final Fantasy Brave XDS. It's also expensive. So how good is Wilk? Really good. Just looking at his passives is extraordinary, and he doesn't suffer from being element locked like Dark Rain or Knights of Grand Shout. Despite having several different chaining options, we likely just stick with Boating Shrike, given that most units who chain with Extreme Nova also chain with Boating Shrike. One flaw is that his support, while powerful, doesn't really last for that long, and if everything going on in battle, you've got to line everything up right. But all things considered, it's good this is on a Magnus ability because my poor Lapis. He's a far better debuffer for that matter. His breaks are strong and easily maintainable, and that 90% defense break doesn't actually have any limits except for speed at which you recharge it. With that in mind, it's not possible to keep that up for a full rotation, unless you've got him at EX plus 2 and plan to supercharge it, which, well, let me add up use. In terms of damage, his strength is comparable to Esther. He's a bit slower with his best attacks, but they certainly hit harder, especially in Clash of Wales, once you take advantage of morale scaling. Overall, great unit. Just a bit unfortunate you won't watch a CG limit burst as much as Esther's, given the only reason you'll use it is to get the killer bust for both demons and dragons, which is really as niche as it gets. Thanks for watching, and if you liked this video, leave a like and subscribe. Comment below if you summoned Wilk, and make sure to tell me you got him from an arena ticket and how you spent zero lapis and are living the best life.